small issue. Uh, couldn't figure out exactly why. Still can't. When we measured out all the lug, um, all the lug studs, we measured out right, I guess, at the collar where they go in through the axle. And the ones that I purchased were actually a hair bigger. I had my gauge with me. They had a gauge. We checked it against the original and just to hopefully compensate for any irregularities we even like I said purchased them a hair bigger since we we're just really matching up the hole sizes and stud sizes and all that so since I really can't um, since I really can't figure out what's going on what I've decided to do so I'm able to go ahead and use these is I'm just going to put a tack on each side one of these lug studs worst case scenario in years future from now if I have to remove one it's just easy as putting it right back here in the clamp taking um, what do you call it taking the cutoff wheel and just snip just snipping the um, the tack welds take a flat wheel grind them flat then reinsert new lug studs so I figure this is about the quickest easiest way to do this I think that should work. Uh, quick, simple tap. What I'll probably go ahead and do and just shoot this off camera real quick. I might just do two of them, one on each side. But I think, I think no, actually, I think that's good. One tack per stud. That should do it uh, very well. Not gonna have to worry about those ever backing out for any reason. And I'm glad that this is easily done with the axle out. Now I can proceed to reinstall this, set the snap rings, and. Um, Go ahead and put the brake drums on. Oh boy. So we got, um, I got the entire axle done. Finished that up actually late evening yesterday. Um, now it's time to turn our attention to <clears throat> the rim and tire. Now, the tire is actually in very decent condition. Um, well, I take that back. It has a little bit of dry cracking, but for what it is, it's not really highway use, even though I'm just going to be putting around in the neighborhood with it. But if you notice, the holes are real wallered out, and that's what kind of led to having to, uh, to uh, have to replace the lug studs. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, valve core out. Figure do that, break the tire down, and swap it out to a different rim. And matter of fact, I just happen to have, which I have several different rims in the tire combination. Um, this was going to be the easiest to deal with. It's another same identical stock rim. Um, what it was, there was a brand new tire on here. <laughs> And one of my buddies was, uh, I believe this would have been his uncle's golf cart. Ended up basically running it, uh, not paying attention, running it right into the tree. It ended up destroying uh, the tire. So somehow or another, I had to remove the tire so I could dispose of, uh, dispose of it. And what I thought was getting stuck with the extra rim ended up being good for me because now I have, uh, gave me an extra, uh, rim to play with so I can dispose of this rim or turn it into uh, some kind of reel for air hose or uh, not an air hose maybe uh, what do you call it extension cord or something now I usually go easy with these because I know this tire has been on I'm going to uh, Take time, go around the bead. Well, how about this? Let me go ahead and break this down and I'll be right back with you. I'm just showing um, 
What I normally do is I like to spin the tire, go little by little, breaking that bead. I mean, after all, it is a manual bender, uh, bender, manual uh, tire machine, and the bead breaker could actually end up uh, bending up your bar if you're not being careful. Now with that, uh, with it completely uh, broken off or broken the bead, now it's just time to. Uh, Set this up. We made a modification to mine, which to me I like it, and that's the the pin. The pin is supposed to be stationary, but we ended up making it where you can set any rim down and just stick it right through one of the lug holes, which was uh, an advantage for me because I like the way how it performs. minutes of time beats going up to the um, tire shop there's a oh reseat at the bottom let me bust that back loose and be right with y'all even uh, some of the local tire shops are uh, very outrageous with their pricing to uh, mount and dismount I think uh, Firestone up the road to keep you from wanting them to do it. It's approximately fifty, fifty-five dollars. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. That's uh, they say it's corporate makes those fees, but fifty-five bucks to mount and dismount one tire and rim and balance it. them nonchalant where they can go with that, with that kind of pricing that's just uh, completely it's completely honestly retarded I got a shop that will do it five bucks to mount five dollars to dismount five dollars to balance so even if I did the whole package it's 15 bucks 15 bucks uh, per rim and tire now this I don't have to get super tight like I would something else. I should go get some of the um, lubricating spray, but nine times out of ten you can put these on these little tires without the spray, uh, the lubricant. Honestly, it's just been it's been so long without practice. I figure if I have the machine, I should be out here using it. At least trying to get my money's worth. How about this? Let me go ahead and get this thing on. You yeah, see, I'm even using the wrong end. Should he be using the top? Let me go ahead and get this thing on. Be right back with y'all as soon as I get this thing ready to be aired up. I got the um, that tire finished up. Went to dinner. Decided to come back. Get a little bit of time. Um, just marked the last of the holes, so I'm getting ready to just go ahead and start uh, taking this whole thing apart. Um, while I was at it, I ended up finding some old treasures here in the shop. Got some cool little valve stems. I had four of them. And I have the same exact thing except with a stud coming out the back, which was made for a tag. These are also off old projects. But the point of redoing this thing was to recycle some stuff. So I guess let me get down to it and um, start breaking this thing down. motor plate I don't know how well you can see this um, there's just like a rough uh, just a rough drawing front and back kind of traced it and what that's going to be for is um, that's going to be 
this would be I guess the back of the motor this would be the front and what I did is I just took a small pencil and kind of uh, just roughly uh, got it down in the hole and traced it and what I also did was mark where the um, oil fill up or the oil drains are at so I just got to decide which one of these I'm going to cut out I'm actually thinking about on the motor remove the plug put a little piece of piping down to a 90 and let it drop down like an inch it'll make for uh, changing oil easy but what I went ahead and done is um, so I don't lose my pencil lines went ahead and drew out the little uh, holes easier so I get easier to see them I think what I'm going to do now is uh, <clears throat> I think we're going to go ahead and draw or uh, drill out what I just drew on there I ended up finally getting all four holes drilled. Um, definitely time for a new set, uh, set of step bits. I think I've literally worn mine completely out. But I can't say nothing. I've had them five years and I've put them through hell like the rest of my drill bits. But there's really only three major components that need to get painted <clears throat> and reattached in order to uh, get this whole thing back together so I'm able to start full reassembly. I've got the main engine plate which is 11 gauge um, mild steel I believe it's 11 gauge and it's plain steel as far as I know I'm not sure if it's anything special but got the motor uh, the motor plate got everything drilled only thing I have left is this side real quick on the the oil setup I have this rear engine bar or mid engine bar should I say that's being held in by two bolts there and two there so I need to take all the four of them loose put them back put the nuts and bolts back in the bag take the mid engine plate out I'll go ahead and take it out <clears throat> I'm gonna hand brush it as well and what I'm using is just a cheap Dollar Tree uh, paintbrush they come like I think they were a dollar a piece but I've realized lately Dollar Tree has been actually putting out a name brand very expensive brush for a dollar about to go back and stock up on like 20 or 30 of them because they come in handy for stuff like this I'm just gonna use regular um, Rust-Oleum it's the professional grade just a black um, oil based paint and um, basically once I did this is already loose that will just actually uh, bolt or uh, I'll probably use self tapping screws uh, to secure it between this aluminum bar and the two steel ones but I definitely want to get this painted I want to get that painted and what I'm going to do for the rear engine bar since that's really in there I think I'm just going to go ahead and just brush this down uh, if I can get to it I'll brush it just so it has some kind of level of protection but I guess let me go ahead and drill the last hole I have to find a good hole saw for that and um, I think we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing ready to be brushed down shot of some nice wet shiny paint ended up doing um, thick coat on these two parts just uh, say the fronts um, tomorrow I'll come back after work it's uh, supposed to be getting hot here in the next couple days I think today's high was like 72 and tomorrow was like 75 so it should toast up the inside of the shop nice so tomorrow by tomorrow this should be dry all the parts I painted tonight I'll be able to take these two and just flip them over and go ahead and um, Go ahead and apply what is it go ahead and apply the second or the coat to the bottom side i have you can see it kind of down there i got the uh, the rear engine brace done as well as a coat of paint on the little jack shaft the little bottom piece and this and the only thing i have to do on this piece is just touch up the corner where um i clamped it up in the vise really um i can go crazy if i want 
I could end up painting this whole axle, um, give it a whole coat of shiny paint. I don't know if I will or not. Um, give me a moment, let me think about it. That is an idea why, because I did paint the brake uh, drums red. A little coat of paint on everything couldn't hurt. There comes a time when you really want to listen to your inner self. Such as, ah, oh, this is only going to take me a minute. I don't need to wear gloves. I'm not going to get this on me. Yeah. There's some more up here. We got a hand, another hand. It's got a little paint on it. But it also what got me is I talked about it. Then I got thinking about it. Then I had to just go ahead and paint the entire axle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I couldn't just stop at the axle. Then the housing. So the whole axle started getting a paint job. And you can kind of see down there. Hopefully the lighting's right. The leaf spring got painted. Still got this one to do. So I figured, okay, my dollar brush from uh, Dollar Tree. Might as well get my money's worth out of it before I throw it away. So far, I managed to get the entire uh, the top plate mount, the axle, the mid mount, the rear mount, and all this other stuff painted. At least if nothing else, I'll have time to dry all tonight and all throughout the morning into the afternoon. And good lord, I don't know how I spilled paint up here. Uh oh. Well, thank God it's not going to be seen. I'll try to wipe it up before I get um, right after I get off the camera. Well, that's all um, for today's clip. As I've been doing most of this project every day, it's a clip here, a clip there. Then eventually, after a couple weeks, I combine these into make one movie, which we're probably this is part six right now. Believe it or not, it's actually taken me like three months, two and a half, two and a quarter months. It took me a little while to get to this point, but we're at least. In the painting and cleaning up stage and after this is going to be um, reassembly that's the part I can't wait for well on to the next I clip I was just going to recap on what I've got done partially late yesterday and uh, today just goofing around well so far I got everything painted um, from what I believe that muffler shouldn't get super hot at all so I went ahead and just slapped some paint on that took the wheel off got the um, that uh, leaf spring on the passenger side. All the other plates are done. Everything's painted. I've gotten the center engine brace in. Got the uh, the main um, engine mount. Uh, yeah, so tired bridges. That's what we're gonna call it. The engine mount. Got the main plate in place. Um, I grabbed some self-tapping screws. Went ahead and I'm putting four across here, four across there. And one of the main things you got to keep in mind. Ended up being not realizing that two of the bolts are going to go through the uh, mid-engine mount, through the plate, right through the motor. So the one part of the engine will definitely be bolted straight to the frame. The other one's almost right in front of it. I left a little bit of room in between the motor in there so I could do a little maintenance if I had to. If you notice also the jack shaft's in place. Um, bolts aren't snugged up yet, but I got went ahead and put it in this place. Um... That's all it's waiting, just to tighten that up. Everything's got a nice little coat of shiny black. And I started goofing around with the engine. Now I took this one spacer out, pushed the whole unit in, and if you notice, that belt's a lot straighter. So it, the belt looks perfect. Now the only issue that I'm running into that if I put this on here, you notice that it sticks up. And it causes this piece right here to slide back a hair. Now, I'm trying to do like the instructions told me. But hell, I've had this thing for going three years, maybe going on four. That has been through various projects with the same setup. Only really ran once, and that was on the racing mower. And that's when I noticed the belt was kind of, uh, kind of leaning to one side more than the other. Or twisted, whatever you want to call it. So, still trying to figure out this... If I'm going to machine this down a little bit so I can get a nice tight fit or how all this goes. So I'm not particularly sure. That's something still right now to be figured out. Um, but that's really the recap. I got most of the reassembly done. 
you got to put this tire back on uh, once I get the uh, the clutch issue figured out I'm gonna go ahead and do some finish welding right here on the end then I'll actually bolt this down nice and tight it's just very loose right now so that's where I'm at right now once I get this engine uh, the little issues figured out I'm gonna take all my little wrap from down there and I'll rewrap this header um, I have the guard for this, but I don't think I'm going to bother with a guard, so that way I can, it'll try to keep the clutch unit a little bit cooler being uh, stuffed down in the golf cart body. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night for right now. Might come back out later on, I think I'm going to go watch some TV. Little by little, I'm getting this thing back together. The um, goal right now is to get it together mechanically, everything tightened, and maybe give it a start up and test the sound of the exhaust. See with the engine, just let it warm up. Hasn't been ran in a long time, but there's no uh, no fuel tank on it, so really right now it doesn't matter. Uh, check the oil level, that's good. Matter of fact, the oil is still nice and golden brown. So obviously that's telling me that it hadn't even really been ran much at all. So I guess if nothing else, before I rechange the oil, I'll go ahead and get it started up. Hopefully that's mounted in the cart with the chain attached, making the back wheel spin.